Here are seven steps to get there. Because that's the question everybody always has. Where do I, you know, what do I need to do? The order might change depending on where you are. But the key steps are, the first thing is, you do have to automate the environment management. Why do we, t you know, you can't have these development teams waiting three weeks for a server, or even, you know, or, and, or two weeks for a server, or, or a, even a day. And then you have to install the software, configure it. You know, this should be available to them instantly. It can be done. Cloud is here, right? We've, there are various technologies. It's not just Agile. You, you know, I've talked to Agile, but really cloud, big data. You know, these are our converging set of technologies available to us and microservices and so forth. So the first thing is you really need to automate environment management. Let's make sure that develop and actually make it so service. The leading organizations, that's what they're doing. You know, you can download the environments when you need them and you use them and then throw them down. Especially if it's testing, you can spin it up, spin it down. Integrate continuously. Well, I don't need to, uh, I guess, iterate much on that. You heard this this morning. Integrating continuously, there's lots of advantages to it, you know, but I would say that the most important one from a business perspective and executive perspective is quality. It really helps, I think, keep the quality higher and you can respond to things much faster. The third thing is you have to increase automation. Tools are important. There's plenty of them out there. But I think that you need to have an architectural approach to automation. It really have, you have to go beyond the user interface. You need, you need to do more API testing. You're going to need to be much more structured. Automation is code itself. And you have to develop that code as if it was a software, with, a, with a software development lifecycle mindset to make it traceable, to make it bug-free, to make it work efficiently, and to do more of it. The fourth point is make data-driven release decisions. So we're, you know, we're exploding with this analytics with data, right? And so we've got lots of data when we develop in a delivery process. All the tools generate data and metadata. There's lots of information in that data. And we're starting to see more and more use of that data with analytic tools, actually with even learning, uh, machine learning uh, algorithms that can make really great intelligent correlations and, and, and pull out of that data interesting information that we can use to decide what to te test next or what to release. Or is this candidate, is, is everything given all the tests that passed and all the testing I did and the data that was produced and the tools I used and, the, and, and all the sorts of information, am I ready to deploy? Is this something that I can pull into the release or not. Reduce sizes of releases, small batches. A lot of this is a, you know, route about lean, I would say. But smaller batches are easier to manage and deploy than large releases. Again, I, I know I'm iterating things that you've heard today, but I'm just putting it here into context. <coughs> it really means a lot. It really simplifies. You can deliver things sooner and with less risk. Eliminate handoffs and wait time. Actually, that's that's a you know uh, maybe sometimes I you know I, I pull that and put that at step number one because then I can also automate those. But there's lots of you'll find out and actually what we what I see in the data and in in my discussions with clients that's the the biggest the biggest uh, you know waste in our software delivery process is handovers. It's kind of the joke I made at the beginning. It's handovers and it's uh, handoffs you know between uh, people and teams. Uh, and it's wait time. Meetings, you have to wait for, the, you know, for a certain meet, meeting to happen before you can move forward. You can do a quick litmus test in your organization. Just a null change. Check how long it takes to, pull, uh, to push a null change in the software into production. And that will tell you how much waste you have. And you can go fix it right away, by the way. That's easy to fix. You can just eliminate it. And you can automate it. And the, f and the last but not least is really the feedback loop. The feedback loop is really crucial and it's strategic because it really, it's the best way that you can get from the users that are actually using the software, the best feedback comes from them. Yes, your business analyst will do a great job helping you with that, but it's your users that will really give you the feedback on what needs to change, what you need to, you know, how you, how you move the, what you need to, where you need to focus on on your product delivery.